everyone for uh, coming in today. Thank you, Will, uh, for, for having me, and congratulations on the new space. And uh, if uh, you're one of Will's uh, customer prospects, uh, I can't say good enough things about his company or his, his people. So uh, you're in the right place today. Uh, so let's get started. We're talking about the PPC state of PPC marketing in 2016 and beyond. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, before jumping in all, all the details and math, uh, give you introduce myself with a couple of random facts. Uh, so my charity, this is a charity event, by the way. Thank you for, for uh, my, my charity is uh, World Vision. Uh, uh, so that's uh, Fanny, seven years old at, at the Congo, and one, she's one of my uh, our adopted kids for this charity. So thanks for coming out, everyone. Uh, I'm from Canada originally, um, from a city called Winnipeg, which is famous for being colder than Mars about half the year. Uh, <laughs> I later moved to Boston because the uh, the weather is so much better there. Uh, uh, I I actually live in, uh, not too far away, Boston here, I live in a city called Cambridge uh, in the neighborhood called Harvard Square. It's a pretty famous place because that's where uh, Facebook was actually founded. It's also where Microsoft was founded and also where Wordstream was founded. Uh, I started out as a search marketer back in 2008 uh, working out of a Panera Bread for the free Wi-Fi and uh, unlimited Diet Coke refills. Uh, the company's uh, gone a lot bigger. I manage about half a billion dollars bad spend. Uh, so that's roughly 1% of all of Google's world, worldwide revenues runs through my company, uh, and uh, we, we've upgraded from Panera. All right, last thing, I have a one-year-old, like Will. Uh, you can follow his adventures uh, uh, on hash, with the hashtag PPC Kid. All right, so enough about me. <laughs> We're talking about the future of PPC and, S and, and also SEO, because like it's all related. Uh, and, and, well, hang on a second. What's going on here? There's a... There's a, something wrong with my slides. Cause we intro, oh my goodness, there's another presentation here. It says, Google eliminates right side ads. What does it mean? Oh my God. There's like two presentations here today, guys. It's like a presentation in a presentation, like that movie Inception or like Russian Dolls. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, this notion of the right side ads. <laughs> They're gone. Okay. Uh, so essentially, um, you know, obviously, that's, you've probably seen this. Uh, there's a new ad spot above the above the fold, uh, and and three ads below the fold. Tons of industry hype, people going bananas, comparing it to like, you know, a, a flood of of a wipeout basically, uh, and, and tons of studies claiming cost per clicks are jumping through the roof. Uh, but what's really happening? And so I just wanted to quickly share a, a little bit of uh, data on this on this topic. So just uh, to set our baseline things, uh, a number of Clicks, the click share of, of top of page versus right side versus bottom of the page. We're talking 14.6 percent was on the uh, was on the right side and, and bottom of page. Now that you didn't lose the bottom of page there, so you only lost. Uh, and and this, this is top, uh, change, uh, which is kind of just here. one of the things kind of extrapolate what's actually happening uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the system here, and so you can see like you know, desktop was kind of on the decline for quite a while now. Uh, and for all the tablets out of nowhere. Uh, basically, um, basically uh, the, cost, the, the, the click rates are uh, rising, uh, as you might expect, because there's more prominent ad space. Um, you know, especially uh, the, the share for shopping clicks is rising considerably uh, because there's less distractions. Um, uh, you know, in terms of the, the quant quality of, of, of desks, that's not that's to be delivered. Uh, it's, it's pretty much unchanged week to week. Uh, maybe a slight increase. In, uh, in, uh, ad impressions, as you might expect, uh, but though not not that much. Uh, and and it must reflect we're not seeing much change. It's, it's either flat or down, uh, down uh, basically the same as what it was before. Uh, and so one of the, one of the analysis that we did here was. Just, Take a quick look. Was the, uh, what was the uh, how much share of impressions and clicks were being soaked up by the different ad positions before that change? And uh, basically, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, spots for the ads are gone. Those spots uh, were, were, were accrued. 0.2 percent of the clicks, uh, the, the, the the bottom of seven, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, spots. Uh, so it's kind of not really a, a, a big deal here. Um, and, and there's definitely some benefits. Uh, like now all of the ads can get uh, like call out extensions, review extensions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, that something we didn't have before. So I think the bottom line here is if you believe everything you read on the internet, unless of course I wrote it, uh, then you can believe it. <laughs> and now back to our regular scheduled programming, which was kind of the future of PPC and SEO 
uh, and I created this story for you, divided it into three acts. Uh, first act, we're doomed. Uh, so, uh, afterwards, it's, great. it's I love it, but it's not new. It's been around for 15 years, and uh, when it came out 15 years ago, it was like quite a big deal. It, was, it basically allowed you to jump into the head of the person who was doing a search right at the time when they were looking to buy the thing that you were selling. And so direct response marketing was a completely new thing. You just pick it up keyword and send them to a money landing page that sells exactly what they're looking for. This was the notion of direct holy grail marketing was born and what was so fantastic about this was 15 years ago it was first produced the alternative was ridiculous. It was like these dumb banner ads on websites with less than one one hundredth of a percent click through rates. Uh, and so, so it, 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 I, I was really excited about this when it came out and, and it, we've had a good run. And, uh, I guess what I'm saying is we've got to brace ourselves because there's, like, there's some uh, headwinds uh, when I look into the crystal ball of, of the PC, uh, and, and I think uh, we need to brace ourselves for, for some change. Uh, what kind of change am I talking about? Well, uh, cost per clicks are not cheap. Uh, every every quarter they go up, and the reason this matters is that every penny increase in CPC is a one penny decrease in ROI, uh, and so that's a problem. Another challenge is if you happen to be in a, in a competitive vertical, cost per clicks could be you know fifty dollars, hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars. Uh, it, it's very, very expensive. Uh, a third challenge has to do with mobile. Uh, mobile is both a challenge and an opportunity, um, but uh, I think the challenge here, as, as I was showing you before, is just the fewer ad spots to buy on Google than there was on desktop. And, uh, and, and so another challenge has to do with the fact that apps are stealing from searches that used to happen on Google. So you know, Japanese restaurant or something like that you used to search on, now you just open a, a Yelp app on your mobile and just look, look, look through there. Uh, and so people are actually spending more time on mobile apps than they are on the desktop. Uh, and it's uh, such a challenge that there's a, a good number of people who actually don't bother searching for things anymore on a given day. They just get the information directly from apps. Um, here's another challenge. Most of the time, 95% of, of the internet time is spent uh, consuming content, and only 5% of it is spent searching for content. Uh, and so uh, the, the budgets are actually the opposite. It's something like two-thirds of the of digital marketing budgets are going to search, and only a third of it's going to everything else. So I think what I'm describing to you here today has to do with uh, a situation where you've got very, very high cost per clicks and kind of stagnant inventory of searches. And I think that's uh, very, very challenging. Uh, it gets worse. Uh, a lot of the challenges has to do with like brand recall. So like uh, if you're doing paid search, these text text uh, listing ads, it's not necessarily the greatest platform to to, uh, to build your brand because it's just text and people don't necessarily remember uh, all the things that they didn't click on. Uh, there's there's other challenges. Um, conversion rates is a real challenge. Like you know, here we are, 15 years later, uh, and the average uh, the average conversion rate from paid search hasn't moved at all in 15 years. It's still around two and a half percent. So all that magical you know CRO BS, it doesn't work. It's just transient gains. Uh, the steady state hasn't changed at all in 15 years. And, and in some, some, some respects, when I think about the paid, your paid search, or PPC marketing for that matter, it kind of feels like this guy, but it actually gets worse. Uh, the greatest strength of PPC marketing is actually the greatest weakness of PPC marketing. What I mean by this is that the greatest strength of PPC marketing, or search PPC marketing, is that you're able to transport yourself into the head of the person who's, who's looking to buy the products and services uh, right at the right time when they're looking to buy the thing, right? That's the greatest strength. The greatest weakness is, is, is the opposite. Uh, it, it's basically uh, you're not growing the demand for your products and services, right? You're, only, you're, just, you're, just, you're chasing after the existing market for the products and services that people are buying, but you're not growing the market in terms of going after people who haven't heard of things or, 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 or uh, but, but might, might be interested in it. And so, uh, so this is a challenge. And, and so I want to challenge ourselves today to try to come up with a new way of doing a PPC marketing uh, in such a way that we could A, uh, create new demand and new awareness for the products and services that we're selling, uh, and also to be able to capture that demand at far, far less cost uh, and, and, and to convert it at, at much greater rates. And I'm not talking about 10% better or 20% better. I want like 10,000% better or, or, you know, like much, much better, just like how Google search when it first came out was so much better than those crappy banner ads. Uh, and so this brings me to act two of my story, uh, which is a new power is rising. Uh, so <laughs> this power is social media ads. Now you might laugh because uh, if you've been following my uh, 
uh, blogs at all for the last four years. Uh, I've, I've been as actually the leader of the Facebook ads are sucky uh, kind of uh, rebellion. Uh, you know, <laughs> here's like one article that I published. Uh, but, but, but basically, uh, they've, they've come a long way like, from, from those dumb like like campaigns where you're buying fans and all this stuff. Uh, they've come a long way from that, and, and I think it's, it's actually worthwhile to, to give them another look. Um, and it's just, all I'm just saying, uh, uh, keep an open mind. I'll, I'll share some data here, and maybe uh, at the end of this, you can join me in the rebellion. Uh, so why the heck should PPC marketers care about social media advertising? Uh, I think it has to do with this. Uh, for the last 15 years, we've been focusing a lot on our hero, direct conversion, uh, maybe a little too much. Uh, uh, it, the, his sidekick, the assisted conversion, uh, it's possible that we may have underestimated his, his role uh, in, in the equation. Uh, so let me just explain to you how d indirect conversion works in, in paid social ads. Uh, there's two things that face paid social media ads on Facebook and Twitter do fantastically well. Uh, the first thing that it does, is it's the greatest way to amplify the reach of the that you're producing so that your target market uh, consumes the content that you're producing. Uh, the second thing that paid, search does, uh, paid social ads do fantastically well is it has a really weird way to convert people into sales and leads at very, very astronomically high rates. Uh, the way that it works is you, f you, you it's, through, it's basically remarketing, but then you then filter the remarketing audience. So like say you've got a thousand people in your remarketing audience, maybe only two or 3% of those people are actually going to buy from you. So you filter that audience based on like demo demographics, behaviors, uh, you know, demographics, and, and kind of find the needle in the haystack and remarket to that small segment of people. And then when you get this working, uh, it's basically printing money. One of the interesting things about social media advertising is that it's not very expensive at all. You don't need tons of money. In fact, all of the examples that I'm talking about today are using $50 or less on social media ads uh, to either uh, use social media ads as a catalyst to, to get the ball rolling on a, on a project or as an accelerant to make bigger explosions out of like successful campaigns. And so I just wanted to share with you, so this is both a strategic and also a tactical uh, session here. I wanted to share with you some specific hacks on how, uh, and tips and tricks on how to execute these campaigns. So it's not just theoretical. I'm focusing primarily on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, sorry uh, if you're a Google Plus fan, it's okay. I don't think Wilson was in the market for whatever it is you're selling. Uh, so we're talking about uh, my, uh, the biggest hack that they, out there it has to do with quality score. Quality score is, of course, uh, the algorithm where you know that Google needs to figure out which ads to show at the top, and it's not just about what, what you're willing to pay; it's it's which are the most relevant ads. And so, you know, Facebook has copied that idea, identic uh, like cloned it, calling it relevancy score. Uh, relevancy score is a score from one to ten. The higher the relevancy of, of your post like people clicking on it or liking it or, or sharing it or commenting, that's more engagement. That'll be higher relevancy scores. You get rewarded when you promote these things with uh, very, very low cost per click and huge impression share. Same thing with Twitter. Twitter just copied Facebook, which copied Google. Uh, they call it quality adjusted bid. Quality adjusted bid is simply what is the uh, residence, residence relevancy and recency of the thing that you're looking to promote on Twitter. And uh, the higher that is, uh, the, the, the less the cost and the more uh, impression share. Uh, what people don't understand uh, when they're starting out with social media ads uh, is this notion of leverage, how much leverage there is uh, in, in quality scores. So the, they'll, they'll promote some junk. Uh, it has a 1% engagement rate and they're paying $3 a click. And I'm like, that's crazy. They're, and I'm like, of course it's crazy because it's like you're promoting junk. What they don't realize is if you, instead of promoting junk, you promoted stuff that was really interesting and had like 7% or 20% or 30 or 40% engagement rates, your cost per click would fall from $3 to $0.08 cents to $0.02 cents to one penny or less. So roughly uh, every 1% increase in engagement rate, that, that'll typically change your cost uh, per engagement uh, up or down by 5%. It's not just about the cost per click that matters. It's also the number of ad impressions. Remember, uh, you're not the only person who might want to show your ads on Facebook. There's other companies. Uh, so uh, it has to do with uh, you know whether or not the, they're going to pick your ad rather than some other some other ad. And so this is typically what happens as a campaign ages. Uh, it, the the social media platform will just show it fewer and fewer times because it's like, why should I show this old thing when there's a fresh ad that I could show uh, instead? And so basically, the strategy that we should be employing on social media ads is to uh, maximize engagement uh, and thereby maximize quality score. 
If you do so, life will be great. You'll get tons of clicks. They'll be cheap, relevant, and you'll get your ads will blanket the, everywhere. Uh, the opposite is also true. It's a death spiral. Your ads won't be shown. If they do shown, it'll cost an arm and leg, and they're not going to convert. So this is uh, that guy Harvey Dent from the from the Dark Knight. He had the saying: you either win the day or, or like die a hero or live long enough to be the villain. In social media ads, your campaigns have to win the day or they live long enough to be stinkers. Uh, so basically, the idea is to promote your best stuff. Like if you're going to pay to promote on social, don't promote the garbage, promote your unicorns. I call them unicorns because they're rare and, and beautiful creatures. We're talking about the top one, two, three percent of, of the most engaging stuff that you have to promote in terms of your content and offers. I uh, just wanted to give you an example. Uh, this is a, kind of a tweet that I did last year. Goodbye, comma, Google Plus. I, I'm not a fan of Google Plus if you haven't figured it out. But basically, uh, I made a Photoshop, a little gravestone. Uh, tweeted it out. It got like in a minute. It got like a hundred re retweets. I kid you not. I was like, "Holy cow! Everyone is retweeting this thing. What the heck is going on? This must be a unicorn." And so, like, I paid to promote the thing. Uh, you know, two hundred fifty dollars uh, uh, just just to promote that piece of content. And within a couple hours, it generated one thousand five hundred retweets and 100,000 people to the site, uh, and that is how you do it. Uh, basically, the worst thing that you can do in paid social media is say, like, oh, I've got 10 things on my wall, and I've got a $1,000 budget. Let's equally divide the budget into, like, $100 increments and, and promote everything equally. No, 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 no. What you do is you take the entire budget, $1,000, and you go all in on that top unicorn. Now, the second worst thing that you can do is say, like, oh, I've got nothing good this month. Um, Maybe I can find some junk from last month to promote. Uh, and that doesn't work either, because if it didn't work last month, it's not going to work this month. So basically, what we need to do is figure out a way to get high quality scores to find these unicorns, because if we could find these unicorns, it, life would be great. You know, it would be sunny every day, no rain in the forecast. You know, I spent a lot of time studying uh, unicorns and how they live and, you know, how to create them and what they eat. Uh, and so I've actually created a unicorn detector. It is very easy to operate as handheld, and I will share with you my uh, secret unicorn detector today. Uh, basically, I also call it Larry's organic paid social networking post and pyramid social scheme. So this pyramid scheme, uh, it's okay, it's totally legal, you will not go to jail. Uh, basically what you do is you addition lots of content, lots of offers, uh, you know, like tweeting out lots of stuff organically, and then you kind of uh, see what does well. And, and of the winners, only the winners get promoted onto the different social networks in a, in a paid fashion. So basically we're talking about tweeting a little bit more often, or it doesn't even have to be tweeting, it could be like emailing out lots of different uh, uh, lots of different offers and figuring out which has the highest engagement rate, et, et cetera, and only promoting the best stuff. It's kind of like that movie uh, Hunger Games. Where you have those tributes battling it out in the districts, and only the victor gets celebrated in the capital. And by the way, I hope you guys watch movies, because I'm screwed if you don't watch movies. There's a lot of movies in here. Uh, uh, so how do we find these unicorns? Well, you just download the data. They're Twitter analytics and Facebook insights, and, and look for the for the most engaging stuff. And basically, what you do is, uh, if you do this for a couple of months, you'll actually find more than one unicorn. Like if you do this for 12 months, you might have like 20 or 30 unicorns. Okay, and and uh, within those unicorns, there's even going to be a super unicorn. Like like uh, there's going to be one unicorn that makes everything else look like donkeys. Uh, and so uh, it's kind of like the, the Hunger Games Part 2, where they took the victors and fought each other uh, and, and the, to figure out who was the best of the best. And so uh, then, then you can go all in on your super unicorn. Uh, so the, essentially, uh, there's one big difference between paid social media and organic social media that people always get confused if you're coming from a social media background. Uh, the difference is that in paid social media, you have to be more picky. The goal is not just to maximize engagement at all costs. The goal is to maximize to cast a narrow net and then maximize the engagement within that narrow net casting. Uh, so this brings me to uh, a couple other hacks uh, that has to do with turning low engagement stuff into ridiculously high engagement uh, using uh, targeting. So targeting, uh, here's a simple example. I write for Inc. I wrote an article about the Google CEO and, and uh, how, how there's a new CEO and it had a 3% engagement rate. That's not a use. Uh, but I narrowed the targeting when I promoted this to just people who the hashtag alphabet uh, in the last seven days. Uh, and then it raised the engagement rates from 3% by 10 times to 27%. And so for 
uh, for $49, uh, I got 2,100 clicks, you know, 348 retweets, uh, you know, 32,000 impressions, and 18 followers. Um, so basically, the idea is that uh, audience targeting, smart audience targeting, can transform kind of an okay uh, post into a unicorn. <laughs> My number seven hack, or number eight hack has to do with getting free clicks on social media. This is also very poorly understood uh, concept of social media advertising uh, that you can actually get a ton of free clicks uh, from doing social. They, most people think you have to pay for it. Uh, actually, I get most, the majority of my clicks from paid social for free. Uh, the reason how this works is uh, if I pay to promote something on Facebook, on Twitter, and if Will retweets it or likes it, then I have to pay for that. But if one of Will's friends then clicks on the thing that he retweeted or liked, then I don't have to pay for that. So that's second order effects are free. Uh, and so if you are employing the unicorn promotion strategy, i.e. Uh, putting stuff out there that is likely to be liked and retweeted, you actually get in a situation where, uh, you know, it's like buy one, get three free. Uh, another hack has to do with increasing the chance that those clicks that you're buying actually turn into leads and sales, uh, right? Because, um, you know, we're not looking just to buy clicks. That's kind of like 1990s calling. They want their website strategy back. Uh, hits, they call it how hits track success. Uh, so what we're gonna do is rather than just buying clicks from people, we're gonna buy clicks from people with a certain uh, behavioral uh, uh, characteristics, like they purchased uh, per purchased business software recently. So, uh, or, or if you're selling uh, coffee mugs, uh, sell people to sell to people who, who, who drink co coffee or K-cups. Um, you know, same, same thing with the demographic targeting. If you're a jeweler, uh, go after people who are, you know, have some, they're rich and they uh, have like a 25th anniversary coming up and are male or something like that, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the target markets, but you do, and you specify them, and by doing this, you're gonna narrow the targeting so that you're only going after the people who are likely to buy. Um, uh, we're talking about social media remarketing here. There's only one thing that I want to talk about here uh, that is uh, very interesting. So when you do remarketing on social media, uh, so people visit your site first and then they see your ads in Facebook or Twitter, those people who then see it on Facebook and Twitter are three times more likely to engage with your content. And if they do engage with that content, they're twice as likely to buy from you. Uh, so what do we do with the power of social media remarketing? We push the offers, the actual things that like, you know, sign up for a uh, demo or consultation or buy the thing. The hard offers with the stubbornly low conversion rates, this will actually make them viable. You know what's better than remarketing? Super remarketing. If you've never heard of super remarketing, uh, it's because I've just made this up. It's not even a real industry term. But it reminds me of like in Transformers when they have those robots and they combine to form a bigger robot. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to combine the power of remarketing, <laughs> high engagement content, behavioral targeting, demographic targeting, and interest targeting all together. And behold, this is the power of super remarketing. You're targeting people who are interested in your stuff because they've checked you out recently and they're also qualified to buy your stuff. And when you do this with high engagement content, all three combined, uh, this is actually printing money. Uh, talking a little bit about uh, even more powerful, it's, like, it's hard to believe they could get it any more powerful, but it does. Uh, talking about custom audiences, uh, this is a really interesting feature in, in Facebook and Twitter ads where instead of just targeting by interests or by purchasing behavior or by demographics, you can actually target people by their emails or their Twitter, Twitter IDs or their phone numbers. And so all you do is you just download the lists and upload them into your into your Facebook or your Twitter, and it feels like email marketing. So where you're uh, actually shooting out very targeted offers to very specific lists, uh, it's, it's actually better than email marketing because you don't have to worry stupid and subscribes. You don't have to worry about uh, constraints. Like, like there's a limit on how many times you can hit your list in, in a given week. Uh, and so I just wanted to share with you one or two examples of how to use the power of lists. Uh, this is a true story. So uh, you might know I do a lot of blogging. And so uh, about a year ago, I wrote about a story where Google Plus and Gmail were dis disintermediated. They were kind of disconnected. They used to be connected as one product, uh, but they were kind of, so they divorced. Uh, and so I shared this on my, my Twitter and my social media. And um, 
I promoted it. Now, I didn't promote it to everyone on my list. Uh, I, I promoted it to a very small list of 1,000 influential people in the media, like think like the blogger, uh, editor-in-chief for TechCrunch or, or New York Times or that kind of stuff. And I just curated that list manually. Uh, so within two hours, I, 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 I'm pushing out my story to, to a very narrow audience. You know, the story shows up in, in marketing land. And see that little blue line? It's hard to see, but it's actually a link. So like kind of a big deal if you're a, an SEO or doing link building, you know, getting a link from a high value uh, <laughs> website. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I'm doing my link building dance. Uh, but it was really, really interesting. Within just a couple uh, couple days, like so we're talking about 72 hours, uh, because there were a thousand names on that list that I was promoting to, uh, it, the story actually showed up, you know, in 500 newspapers around the world, uh, generating uh, over uh, over 100,000 visitors to the site, massive brand exposure for myself and my company, uh, for total cost of $50 for 10 minutes of work. Not a bad deal. Now, sometimes people say, "Oh, Larry, you just got lucky." Key. Uh, so in in, in pay, pay per click marketing, you know, once is a fluke, twice is a trend. Uh, obviously, <laughs> that's a joke, guys. Uh, 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 so uh, I just want to share one other example here, and this is another story that I blogged. Uh, do Twitter ads work? Uh, comparing Facebook and Twitter uh, ad performance, anyone can do this. Any agency could do this. Um, but basically, I just illustrated it in a, in a graphical form. I promoted the thing to my list of influential people. Within two hours, the editor of Business Insider, who was on my list, emails me back and says, "I'd like to, to put this in in, in my uh, in my publication. Can we syndicate the thing?" And I'm like, "Woohoo! Yeah, this is this is what I was hoping for. <laughs> I'm excited, right?" Uh, but the thing that you, what you don't understand is that when you have a unicorn, you have to go all in on the unicorn. Okay, it's not so like I I I, I basically. Um, I took that copy, like the syndicated copy of my article that Business Insider wrote, I reshared it on my Twitter and on my Facebook, and I heard this voice in my head. It was like, you know, because I might have just walked away from this. I could have said, you know, I won what I wanted to do, but the voice said, promote your unicorns, Larry. And I was like, this is a unicorn. You have to spend more than $50, so re-promote. Uh, so, I, so I did the thing again, uh, and within an hour, I get an email from Fox Business News, uh, and they're like, oh, we saw your, your Business Insider article. Uh, we'd like to have you on your show. So guys, this was a four and a half minute segment on the Fox News business channel with over a million vi visitors. I could not afford to buy this kind of coverage, uh, but really it's that easy uh, and it actually gets better. Uh, the Facebook, after watching the, 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 the clip, they emailed me like the VPs and Sheryl Sandberg or whatever. They, 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 they emailed me, they said, we saw your piece. Why don't you come over, visit our campus, get to know the, the people on our team. And the coolest thing about this was they found out that my wife was pregnant uh, and so they gave me this Facebook baby hoodie that was worth $25. Guys, that's half the price of my, my total media spend. <laughs> so, oh my God. So we're talking like $50, 10 minutes, not a bad deal. Uh, you know, I'm a columnist now on Business Insider as a result of, of having built a relationship. And if you're not into like these PR stunts, and if you're not into like content marketing, well, you can use these for, for e-commerce. Uh, it has to do with uh, just using the power of custom audiences to segment your audiences, like you segment your emails in terms of like recent purchasers, big big customers, abandoned abandoned shopping carts, you know, warranty expired. Just segment your your user base and then target them on social ads with very specific messages that correspond to their identity. Uh, and of course, if you're interested in expanding beyond just the people who you have on your list, you use the power of similar audiences to clone and find people with 99% similar characteristics. Um, so I want to talk about how to get even more free clicks. So it's kind of crazy, right? It's like, how can you get even more free clicks than this? But I, you can actually get 100 times more free clicks than what I've, what I've been talking about. And the idea is to use the power of aggregators such as Medium or Dig or Reddit or LinkedIn Pulse. These are these sites where if you submit some piece of content, uh, if it raises to the top, you'll get a tremendous amount of, of free exposure organically. And so this actually happened the other day. Uh, actually, this is uh, this month, January something. I have the top story for Fe January and February on Medium. That's like one of these aggregator sites. And uh, how, did, how did I do that? Uh, well, basically, Medium, the way this works is the more hearts, like the more likes you get, the more likely it is to, to be on the front page. Uh, and so how did I generate 6,000 hearts? Well, all I did was I wrote a program and downloaded the list of the most active users on Medium and then targeted ads to those people with $50. <laughs> it wasn't that hard. Guys, I can do this like 
every day for $50. Uh, and, and so this works on Reddit, it works on Hacker News, it works on Dig. It's so easy, you just target users, like super users on the platform who are also interested in the topic that you're blogging about. I use this uh, on my LinkedIn for LinkedIn Pulse. I have over a million views on my profile every year. That's more than President Obama, uh, although Obama is probably doing other things, not optimizing his LinkedIn profile. <laughs> but the, the point is, it's very, very easy and very, very powerful to use the power of custom audiences to, to get these really targeted uh, uh, effects. We're down to my number two hack, uh, something called RLSA. This is, now we're getting into the advanced part of the session. Uh, RLSA stands for Remarketing Lists for Search Ads. Okay, so uh, if you're wondering what that graphic is, it's just, it reminds me of YMCA, which is kind of like uh, what happened to village people there. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but basically, this is an advanced tactic. We're gonna combine the power of search ads with social ads. Uh, it's a little complicated, so I'm gonna need you to, to pay attention here. So remarketing lists for search ads is very interesting. It allows you to, to, to buy keywords and then show those ads not to anybody, but just to people who've recently visited your website, all right? Uh, so that's, that's a key thing. It's showing ads, search ads, uh, to people who've recently visited your website. Now, the interesting thing about RLSA is because now, you're not targeting anybody, you're targeting people who've recently visited your website, what we see is that they're twice as likely to click on your ad. Uh, and because of quality score, that means the cost for those clicks goes down by half. And because they're familiar with your brand, they're twice as likely to convert. So this is really interesting. Uh, the problem with RLSA is that it's a bit of a shell game. Uh, RLSA doesn't really grow the demand for your product. It merely steals the conversions uh, from other campaigns that were targeting the same keywords. So I, this is, I didn't realize the script would be this small, but essentially what I'm trying to illustrate here is that I had two campaigns where it was like, one was the same keyword list with RLSA, one was the same key keyword list without RLSA. And it's like, oh my God, RLSA is doing so much better. It's like $30 versus $140 a conversion, right? Uh, but the problem is that in terms of the total volume, like the month before we did this, uh, you know, it was 150 conversions. And then the month after, it was like 249. So it was just moving the cheap conversions out of the, of the, out of the big bucket into a separate campaign. We weren't actually, it was like a shell game. So the, the idea here, uh, if you're following me, the idea here is RLSA by itself is useless. You're just moving conversions around. But what I do is I use the power of social ads to generate millions of people into these remarketing audiences for $50 and then market to them on keywords with high intent keywords on search so that when the need arises to, for, uh, to buy the things that I'm selling, uh, they then are biased toward clicking on my search results because the click-through rate is higher, I pay half for that click, and the conversion rate is double because they're familiar with my brand. So that's how you combine social ads with the power of search ads. You have to, it's a little complicated topic. Uh, if, if you want, you can ask me questions about this later. Uh, this is actually an even more crazy hack. This is the craziest hack of them all. Uh, this has to do with hacking rank brain uh, uh, this, which is a new SEO algorithm using the power of PPC. This, just a show of hands, has anyone ever heard of RankBrain? So about half of you. So it's kind of like a new algorithm. Uh, basically, be, uh, currently Google ranks organic search results by, uh, by mostly by links and content, uh, but SEO Judgment Day, like there's this new, there's this new form of ranking stuff where they're looking at user engagement s signals like click-through rates and, and bounce rates and all this stuff. So it's, it's almost like paid search, uh, but they're using like engagement signals to also influence the organic search results. And currently it's their third biggest ranking factor, uh, but S S Judgment Day actually happens two years from now when RankBrain becomes the number one SEO signal. Now you're wondering like, how do I know uh, that it happens two years from two years from now? Well, the leader of the SEO rebellion, John has sent me back in time from the future, from the year 2020, to, to help you survive SEO Judgment Day. Uh, so, so uh, <laughs> that's a joke, guys. Uh, uh, basically, I need to explain to you how Rank Brain works, and I just want to share with you a little bit of, of, of uh, some research that I did this week. Uh, so, 
uh, Rank Brain today is working on long tail searches, like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten word searches. They're not using it on head terms, one, one or two word searches. The reason why they're doing this uh, is because it's new. You don't want to you don't want to muck around with like the, the the good stuff. You want to muck around with stuff that's they're not really sure about, like a ten word query. I don't know where like we, they don't even know where to send that page. Uh, so basically, what I did was I looked at the click through rate versus ranking for long tail terms versus head terms. Okay, and there's a huge difference. Uh, basically, the long tail terms uh, have much much higher click through rates uh, than than the uh, than the head terms in, in high positions like two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, uh, and then that converges. Now you might think, wait a minute, that makes a lot of sense because I would expect long tail terms to have higher click rate. Uh, but why, why the shape? Why does it? Why does it um, converge? Uh, and so I I did some testing uh, to look at the click through rate for those same keywords on paid search, and we had a different shape of the graph. Uh, the long tail keywords had much higher click through rates, or actually. It had higher click-through rates, but it was it was the same when when I was in high positions like one, two, three, and then it diverged in, in positions four, five, six, seven. So basically, it's the opposite. Uh, you're having like a huge, huge divergence of the two in, in in the high positions for organic. The opposite, it's huge divergence at the bottom of, of the page. Paid. So what the difference is, we believe, is is actually rank brain is giving the high click-through rate things kind of a little bonus points, if you will, in terms of the rankings, uh, to, uh, because they seem to be getting good engagement. Uh, and so what I did with the analysis was just try to quantify the, 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 re, the magnitude of these bonus points. And what I can tell you is if you're beating the expected click-through rate for an ad, uh, or sorry, if you're beating the, the expected click-through rate for a, an organic spot and, and you wanted to, to move that up by another spot, you just have to beat it by 3%. If you want to move up another spot, you just have to beat the expected click rate by another 3%. Uh, so, so this is what it looks like. Uh, if you want to just keep going up and up and up, beat, beat to the number one spot, beat the expected click rate by about 30%. Uh, so essentially what I'm talking about here is hacking rank brain. Uh, the, the idea is to just increase your organic click through rate because if you do, uh, well, first of all, forget about rank brain. If you increase your organic click through rates, you'll get more clicks. But what I'm saying is, the, the system will also recognize that as a signal of intent and relevancy, and it'll reward you with better SEO rankings, uh, which will then generate even more clicks. So it's kind of like this virtuous cycle. The reverse is also true. If you have crappy click through rates on your organic stuff, uh, then, then you're not going to get a lot of clicks because you have a crappy click through rate, and Google will now punish you uh, because of, of the crappy. Uh, the crappiness of your uh, click-through rate, and which will result in even fewer and fewer clicks. Uh, so, what do we do about this? Like, what the heck do we do? Uh, how do you raise the click-through rates of, of, of organic uh, listings? And that brings me back to this observation that social paper, social ads, builds awareness of the for, among the people who are who are qualified to buy the things that you're selling. And that recognition, that brand recognition, biases the people to then click on your, your listings so that when they see 10 things to click on, it's like, oh, I remember that thing. I'm going to click on that higher click-through rate. And you just you just hacked it. Uh, so basically, uh, hopefully that made sense. Um, it's, it's pretty new research uh, that we're just doing on spare time here. We don't even do SEO work. <laughs> This is just like a hobby. Uh, 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 I didn't really need to do other things with my life. Uh, but, but, but basically, uh, what does it mean? So we're, we're rounding out here uh, kind of with double rainbow. Uh, what am I talking about today? And I think that brings me to act three of my story, which is I'm actually very optimistic about the future of paid search and our search pay-per-click marketing, sorry, PC marketing, uh, which includes paid search. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, the, the future of PPC has a lot to do with indirect conversion going forward using uh, the combination of social media ads, display remarketing, social media remarketing, and RLSA together to drive awareness and, and demand for the products you're selling and to convert them at the time when they're looking to buy the things that you're actually selling. Uh, so th remember this diagram from before, the, the two things that social PPC does fantastically well is to create the, the, the ability to amplify the content that you're working so hard to produce to get it in front of millions of right people at the, for, for cheap, like pennies. Uh, it also allows you to then convert that, in, that awareness into 
uh, leads in sales by remarketing not, not to everybody, but just to the small segment of that remarketing audience that actually meets all of your demographic, behavioral, and interest criteria. Um, guys, uh, it's been 15 years in PPC marketing so far. Uh, just keep, I'm not suggesting you abandon search. Uh, that's still the money maker. It's still the kind of the, the king, if you will. I'm just saying keep doing what you're doing there. In 2016 beyond, uh, maybe start focusing more on building your brand and creating new demand using these social tactics I'm talking about. Basically, we're talking about the difference between waiting for long tail keyword searches to arrive versus proactively creating demand for the products and services that you're selling. Guys, my view, indirect conversions are the new direct conversions. Uh, that's my Halloween costume from a couple years ago. Um, three key takeaways. Uh, somehow, in the last 15 years, pay-per-click marketing has been increasingly technical. It's like match types and AdWords and all sorts of crazy, you know, match type trapping and bid, bid strategy. This is important, but underlying all of my examples today was actually marketing. It was a piece of content that was inspiring, unusual, uh, you know, memorable, funny. Uh, and, and so you actually need something, you need the marketing first, uh, and then you're using the, the power of PPC to, to amplify and convert that, that marketing. My second takeaway has to do with this notion of unicorns uh, and how Rand Fishing calls them 10x content. I call them unicorns. I think 10x content is wrong because unicorns are worth much, much more than 10x. They're actually worth like 1,000x more than, than your average donkey. Uh, and, and the third idea has to be uh, being a unicorn uh, among the sea of donkeys. Thank you so much, Will, and, uh, and everyone for coming today. That's all I have. <laughs> have a good day. Is that it? Are we, are we taking questions now or is it? Yeah, you... so um, we should have time for questions. Sure. If you're happy to answer them. All right, let's, let's do it. <laughs> um, I'm happy to walk around. We have a few mics. Um, anyone have questions for Larry? Um, there's a lot, a lot of information. Um, I, would, I wonder if I get a My Little Pony, if I'll magically you know, make a lot of uh, <laughs> money off of retweets and tweets. But um, questions for Larry, yes. I'm going to reach soon. Hi. Uh, Hi, Michael. You take your unicorns high. Well, um, I got uh, the question has to do with like fatigue. You got unicorns, they come by, you're promoting them, people are seeing them. We know naturally it's going to fade seven to 10 days or something like that. If I have a parade of unicorns and I keep doing this, can I overlap them or do I just have to let it run? And is there like a resting period maybe that you've so noticed? So I have a, a farm, a unicorn farm of like 50 unicorns, okay? Uh, and what I do is I take at any given time 10 of them, okay? Because you're, he's talking about ad fatigue. Like you, you can't keep showing the ad over and over forever, right? So at any given time, I have 10 unicorns being promoted in an evergreen way on Facebook and Twitter because these are the ones that get 30, 40, 50% engagement rates and I'm paying nothing for them. But it does decline a little bit over time. So to keep it fresh and mix it up, uh, at any given time, I'll take 10. Uh, and then after like two weeks, I'll, I'll, I'll cycle out the unicorns and bring in the unicorn blood uh, for another week or two and then and, and keep switching it up in that way. Uh, and this uh, has a way, uh, has effectively, uh, you have like unicorns 24 seven and not have to worry, worry about ad fatigue. Great question. Great question. Um, back here. here. Thanks, Larry. Um, how do you handle att <clears throat> attribution when you're driving so many assisted conversions? So oh. make sure to properly attribute well, which just, channel gets it. Uh, it's in Google Analytics. There's a thing called assisted conversions uh, multi-channel pathway analysis. And basically, uh, it just tells you of the people who converted, okay, like uh, on your goals from Google Analytics, what was the first way that, like, if you go back in time, what was the first time they saw that? Uh, and, and, if, and if it's like paid Twitter or paid social, uh, that's how you would convert that. Uh, interesting, I was talking a lot about this as a um, kind of a indirect conversion. Uh, however, uh, that undersells the values of these strategies. What we're finding is that, say, uh, say you're running uh, these campaigns and they generate 500 conversions, we'll say. Uh, 500 of those conversions, you know, 
a hundred of those will be first will be will, will actually be direct conversions like they'll, they'll convert on the spot having just gone to the website the other 400 will assist in the in in um, the uh, con other conversions through other channels like like organic or, or direct or paid uh, but will assist in that uh, within the next 90 days so it, it, it generates it's basically that multi-channel funnels or whatever in, in analytics um, I can show it to you in analytics it's a simple report. Well, I think we have time for one more question for Larry. Back here. Just gonna run in the back real quick. Um, uh, you, you talked about search ads with social ads. How did you calculate the um, uh, the effectiveness of it? You said two times click through rates. Like, what software did you use? This is so easy, guys. So all you need, you don't even have to set up RLSA to do this, okay? All you do is look at one of your campaigns that you're running on AdWords or, or Bing ads. Just any campaign that you're looking. Now segment that campaign based on new and repeating visitors, okay? And what you'll find is that the repeat visitors have much higher click-through rates and much, much lower cost per click and much, much higher click-through rates and much higher uh, conversion rates. And so... Like that's that's how you can convince yourself that that uh, having people familiar with your brand, uh, those are the ones that are more likely to convert. So just run that on on, on any one of your campaigns. It's just in the dimensions tab. Um, I hope does that makes sense. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, all right, thanks. All right, thank you, Larry. If, if anyone else had a question and didn't get answered, um, feel free to write it on your index card, and we'll just collect them at the front uh, during the break. Just up to the ledge. So give it up for uh, Larry Kim one more time. Thank you. Thanks.